Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we're going to go behind the scenes into the computer process. So how I import, go through the editing process and store my photos long term all while making sure that everything stays safe and I have redundancy. That way should I incur some type of disaster I don't lose any photos. So from the start, every client, every unique shoot that I have for a client has its own unique folder. So every time that I come home and I am ingesting images, I am starting with a new folder. And I either create this on my desktop or on my working drive. Either of those is fine because those are my two fastest hard drives, M.2 hard drives in my computer. So I always have it on one of them if I'm going to be working on images there. Now from the start, I want to make sure that I maintain organization. So what I do is I put the date that I captured these as well as the client that it's for. And if I'm doing multiple shoots in a day, then I will also put a note about what client that's for if I'm not putting them all in one gallery. So for my college client, I just abbreviate with the initials of the university. If this was for a personal client, like a wedding, I would use their last name, like Smith. And then I would also detail what type of session it was. So like Smith e-sesh or Smith wedding for a wedding, just so that I stay organized and that I can quickly find all these files later. But for this example, it's with the university, which I just, I know that means it's an editorial shoot for the university. So this is all that I would put. And the first thing I'm going to do is paste the images in from either wherever you have them. Like I'm moving them from my computer because I've already done this shoot to share with you guys. But this would be where I would be copying them from my hard drive. So I'm going to go in and paste. And there's the lovely aspect of M.2 drives is how fast this transfers. 1.3 gigabytes per second. Okay, so now my raw files are stored in a folder. And the next thing that I want to do is create a new Lightroom catalog in that same folder. So Lightroom is going to open with a completely bare catalog, but I want to show you guys what happens to that folder. If I open up the folder, we've now got, this is the storage folder inside there. This is the actual Lightroom catalog, as well as some of the like supporting files. That's just where the files that actually store the information about the adjustments made to the image, they exist in these two folders here. So as of right now, I don't think there would be like anything in them because there's no folders. But as soon as we start importing images, then we're going to start seeing those folders fill up. So we import. And we're going to go to my desktop. We're going to navigate to the folder that has all those files. I don't like to import directly off the card. I'm not really sure why I like to copy them into the folder first rather than them getting in those like standard Lightroom folders. I really don't like that method of organization. And now we're going to import all the files that are in there. But the reason that I every single job gets its own catalog is just for organization purposes. I don't want to use one massive catalog for everything because over time those catalogs get really bulky and they slow down and I actually don't like keeping a lot of the files that Lightroom likes to keep. So I don't even want to maintain a catalog of that size because it's just excess space on my hard drive, which when you're dealing with a ton of images and you're trying to keep things on small SSD drives, you don't really have the storage space to maintain all those files long term. So, all right, here we go. All these files from that session loaded up. So now we can see that if we go in here, all these folders just were created and these are all like the default previews and you can see Lightroom just makes an atrocious amount of folders and this is all the stuff that I don't want to store long term, but we do need them until we are done with the images. So both my culling and my editing happen in Lightroom, at least editorial jobs, weddings, some things happen straight into Photoshop, but it's very rare. It's far more common for us to just do things in Lightroom alone. And if you're a Capture One user and you want to make a statement here and say Adobe sucks and Capture One, for my volume, Capture One just cannot keep up. It's not as fast. If you have transcended Adobe completely and you use Capture One, don't even leave it as a comment. Congratulations. We're all so proud of you. All right. So we're not going to sit here and go through the whole editing process right now, but I will show you what I do long term because I think that's important. So at this point, once my files are completed, ed edited, selected, I would be exporting based on my selects. So let's just say that these were the two, four, six, eight files that I chose to export from this job. I would click export. Now what I do is everything 
pre-upload goes directly to my desktop. It being on my desktop is my way of knowing that I still need to put this online and back it up. So my subfolder would be based on the job title that the client has given me in this case. So say it just had something like that. That would be the folder name. And then the way that we name our files is kind of specific to them. So we have this custom file naming structure that I do for the university, but pretty much what I do for everybody is like a three digit followed by numerical. So if this were a wedding and it was Jill and James wedding, then it would be JJW and then the numbers. I don't really worry about files having duplicate names because I keep everything organized really well in folders. So I don't have to worry about files having duplicate names at all. But in the instance of these editorial shoots, they can't possibly have the same name because every single job has its own unique code. Apply some system here so that your files stay organized either within folders or within the name. What is really common is to put the date followed by some type of code name for the job followed by the number of files. I then do my export based on the standards of the job for this editorial stuff. We don't resize, I keep them at maximum resolution and I normally do like 90 quality. All my sharpening and stuff happens in Lightroom, so we don't do any sharpening on export either. So now we've got this other folder here of the finals. So this is the folder with all the raw files, with the Lightroom gallery, and then this is my finals folder. And for the brief moment, this stays outside of this folder but eventually it will make its way inside. So at this point, this is when I upload all my images to the client gallery based on client specifications. So for my wedding clients, I host everything on Smug Mug because it's what I've used forever. It's not an endorsement of Smug Mug. I actually think there's much more elegant solutions these days, but I have hundreds of galleries on Smug Mug and see no purpose for my client to migrate everything to a different service. Check out whatever you want, pass, Zenfolio, but it's really nice to have some type of client viewing service that they can go on and both view, download, order prints, whatever the specifications are. However, for this client, we actually upload directly to Dropbox. So this at this point is when I would move this to Dropbox. Once that upload is complete, now this goes into my folder that has the raw files and everything else. So now everything for this client, including the raw files, the completed JPEGs, as well as the Lightroom files with the adjustments to the raw files, should I have to change something, is all in one folder. But I'm not quite ready to move it to my permanent storage. Now this is completely based on my years, my amount of storage, and what works for me based on how I shoot. But I see no purpose in keeping these uncompressed raw files long term. It just it's never benefited me. Over 10 years in business, I've had maybe five requests for an added file to, to add something else to it. So I've only had to go back to the raw files very, very occasionally. I do like to have every file that I capture just in case they're like, hey, did you get this? But I don't really think that there's a huge purpose for me to keep the full size file. So what I actually do is convert to compressed DNG. So once I have everything done and exported, I already have my JPEGs built off my RAWs. I go back into my library. I make sure that I'm in the grid module because that's the only way that this will work on all photos. I go up here to library and I go to convert photos to DNG. This is what I keep on, only convert raw files. So it's not gonna mess with any JPEGs that would happen to be in here. Delete originals after successful conversions. So once the ARW file, which is Sony's raw extension or .NEF or CR2, whatever camera brand you have, once that has been converted to a DNG, this will automatically kill that original file, put it in your trash can, recycle bin, whatever. File extension DNG. I don't know what the difference between the lowercase and uppercase is here. I use the most modern camera raw because I keep my stuff updated. JPEG preview, I just keep at medium size. And then use lossy compression. This is the important part because if you don't use lossy compression, your file size isn't going to really save much space unless you were shooting a completely uncompressed raw file on your camera, then you'll save a little bit. But I use lossy compression because basically what I need out of my raw file long term is I need to be able to change the exposure and the white balance. I'm not really pushing stuff like five stops and editing. And if I were doing any of that, I might save the raw file long term. But otherwise, 
all I need to do is make slight tweaks and lossy compression I've never had a problem with how the files look after the fact so that's what we're gonna change to here now we're gonna go back in this folder as this is happening you're gonna see these kind of converting but right now you know the standard outside photo is uh, 41 megabytes per file and we're going down to images that are around 12 megabytes so you can see they're around one-third of the size which long term you're talking in a year I shoot 200,000 photos so for 200,000 raw files to be one-third the size saves me a ton in storage and more than just the storage space like storage space is cheap what it really helps me save is time because I have one-third of the upload to back up to my cloud that is a piece of this puzzle I always make sure to back up to the cloud as well as local with redundancy so let's talk about redundancy while this is completing its export now, in the case of a wedding, which I don't instantly edit, those actually go over to my NAS, my network attached storage, and they stay there until we actually get to the edit. That way, they are backed up somewhere, and the NAS itself is in RAID 5, which is a system of redundancy, so it's actually in two places on those hard drives in case one of those hard drives fails. I also have anything that I am currently working on that isn't supposed to take a long time. That's only going to be on my drive for a couple days. I have that back up to an external SSD drive every night. So that way it's impossible for me to lose more than a day's work. Now let's open this folder again. It's about 80% through. So we're almost finished with this. Once I have all these files and I have my finalized folder, it's going to be in quite a few places. My completed JPEGs are going to be stored on my client site, so the site where the clients can view it. I could always download those high resolutions from there should anything happen to the JPEGs. I also put the entire folder with the DNGs, with the completed JPEGs, and the Lightroom catalog file in a separate folder. Now the primary reason that I like to keep my files as well as the Lightroom catalog all together in one folder is because I know if I download this folder from anywhere, if I have to recover it, the Lightroom catalog is right there. And as soon as I open it, it's gonna have access to the DNG files, to the raw files. And that's really nice because I don't have to worry about digging through hard drives to find something that I was working on. Once I find that folder, it has everything I need. I never have to do this. I never am really digging up files, but should I ever have to, it's good to know that it's all in one place and easy to find. But there's one adjustment that I make before I copy these to my cloud. And that is, I close Lightroom once all the raw files have been converted to DNG. And if we open my recycle bin right now, we'd see that we have all those ARW files are already in there. So now this folder is filled with the DNGs. And for whatever reason, normally I can see my DNG previews, but when I have OBS recording, like I'm doing now to share this video with you, it, it just it just doesn't work. Like they just don't load. So yay Windows. All right. The last thing that I do is I don't like uploading these files, these previews and these helper files, because like I said, I never use it. These are also really annoying to upload because there's just so many stupid folders and tiny files that it's not an efficient way to upload because it's constantly refreshing to find new files. So complete pain to upload. If you do have to upload this entire catalog with your previews, then what I would do is zip it all up into one folder before you upload. But for me, like I said, never do I access it. So I just delete all these extra files. So the only file that I keep is the catalog file. And you might think, well, will it still work? And yeah, it absolutely does. If I open this folder, or if I open this file, this catalog file, it's gonna open back up. And the first thing that it's gonna do is recreate preview files, helper files, and everything that it needs for the adjustments. But all the adjustments are stored in the catalog file. So it takes a little bit to like reinitialize and apply all the adjustments, like just a few seconds. But for the most part, I'm never going to access these. So there's no point in me storing all of these excess files. You do have to have the application closed just to delete these two extra folders. So the last thing that I would do is take this entire folder and I would upload it to my cloud site and move it over to my NAS and then delete it off my desktop so I have the space to work on other projects.
All right, guys, I hope that this video on my workflow process helped you out. If you guys want to see more videos on editing, workflow, that style of thing, then make sure to let me know in the comments below because typically these videos don't do very well on my channel because they don't say Godox. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until next time, keep on shooting.